How's it going everyone? This is Chris from Spoon Graphics back with another video tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. The topic I wanted to talk about today is creating the trendy matte look within your photos. The thing is, creating the effect literally takes seconds, so instead I'm going to show you 5 ways to create a matte look in Photoshop. There's a range of tools you can use, each with a slightly different workflow, so hopefully by showing you all these different techniques, you'll be able to take home the one that you find the most straightforward or memorable. Originally, the matte look referred to photographs that were developed with matte paper, as opposed to glossy paper. The difference being the blacks weren't quite as deep on the matte paper, which gave the print more of a softer appearance. That look has evolved into digital photography, where people mimic the effect in Photoshop and Lightroom, to the point where nowadays it's difficult to find a photo that doesn't have washed out blacks on sites such as Unsplash.com and Pixels. Some say it's overused, but I still think it looks really cool, so here are 5 ways you can create the effect yourself. My go-to technique to quickly create the matte look is using the Levels. Add a Levels Adjustment layer, rather than via the Image Adjustments menu, so you can fine tune and remove the effect, rather than it being applied permanently. In the Properties panel, move the smaller slider for the output levels inwards to wash out the blacks. You can then balance this with the normal shadows adjustments under the histogram to bring back some of the darkness. The matte look is often combined with a subtle cross-processed effect. You can also achieve this with the levels by targeting a specific channel. Change the drop-down menu to blue, then adjust the sliders in the same way to see a bluish colour cast being added to the dark areas. There's no specific values for these effects by the way, it's all about keeping an eye on the preview while moving those sliders back and forth. Another way to create the matte look is using the Exposure Adjustment layer. Here we're going to play with just the Offset and Gamma Correction sliders. Gamma washes out the blacks, then just like with the levels, you can bring back some of the darkness using Gamma Correction. There aren't any colour adjustments in the Exposure settings, so if you wanted to add some colour casts, you'd need to add a Colour Balance Adjustment layer. I sometimes like to combine colour balance with the levels too, because I like the colour pairs that you're given. Here you can select the shadows, midtones, and highlights and move the sliders around to adjust the hue. It's really handy to be able to add yellow without trying to mix it with the uh, RGB channels. Curves are another common tool that can be used to create the matte look. Here you need to drag the shadows point in the lower left corner directly upwards to clip the shadows. Once you've added the grey, you can bring back the darkness by bending the curves line. The curves can also be used to add colour adjustments. Change the drop down menu to target a specific channel, like blue, then clip the curves line in the same way. You can also do the same with the highlights end in the top right corner. By dragging it downwards you're reducing the amount of blue in the lighter areas. Another way to boost or lower the colours in the shadows or highlights is to bend the curves line. This increases or decreases the amount of colour more subtly. Fancy cross-processing effects look nice, but the matte look is the perfect choice for black and white images, especially black and white portraits. Add a black and white adjustment layer to see those lovely charcoal greys in the shadows. Another way you can create a black and white matte look with just one adjustment layer rather than a combination of two is to use a gradient map. By default the gradient map uses pure black and pure white, but to achieve a softer matte look, adjust the black to a lighter grey. How light you go determines how washed out the image looks. Gradient maps are also perfect for creating toned or split toned effects, which also mimic the classic effects from the days of analogue photography. Instead of choosing black and white in the adjustment layer, you could choose a dark blue for a selenium look, or combine it with a light yellow for a selenium and sepia split tone appearance. You can even play around with the blending modes like screen or soft light to see how it looks when these colours are subtly applied as an overlay, or you can reduce the opacity of the layer to allow some of the original colours to show through. Then there's one more tool you can use to create a cool matte effect. This one is handy because you get all the colour sliders laid out together. Add the Selective Colour Adjustment layer and change the drop down menu to Blacks. Here you can reduce the actual black slider to initiate the matte look, but then you also have the ability to adjust the cyan, magenta and yellow sliders for a more creative effect. So hope you find these techniques useful, let me know which is your go-to tool down in the comments, or if you have a secret technique that I've missed out that you might want to share with others. If you want to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button to stick around on the Spoon Graphics YouTube channel. 
visit my Spoon Graphics website if you want to download my free bundle of resources. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.